Here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report, I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. We turn now to Iraq, where two suicide bombings on Tuesday left over 50 people dead, including three children. Dozens were injured in the car bomb attacks in the capital, Baghdad. The first occurred just after midnight outside an ice cream parlor as families were gathering to break their Ramadan fast early on Tuesday. Hours later, the second bomb detonated during the morning rush hour near a government building. ISIS has claimed responsibility for both explosions, saying they targeted gatherings of Shia Muslims. The attacks come as thousands of families continue to flee Mosul amid the U.S. and Iraqi military's campaign to retake the city of ISIS. As many as 700,000 civilians have already fled Mosul amid months of fighting. This comes as a newly declassified Pentagon audit, released last week, shows the U.S. Army failed to keep track of more than a billion dollars' worth of weapons and military equipment sent to Iraq and Kuwait, including tens of thousands of assault rifles and hundreds of armored vehicles. The audit found improper record-keeping, including duplicated spreadsheets, handwritten receipts, a lack of a central database to track the transfers. The arms and equipment transfers were a part of the Iraq Train and Equip Fund, a program that initially appropriated $1.6 billion dollars under the 2015 National Defense Authorization Act to help Iraqi forces combat the rise of ISIS. To discuss these findings, we go to London, where we're joined by Patrick Wilkin, Amnesty International's arms control and human rights researcher. Patrick, welcome to Democracy Now! Talk about what you found. Talk about what this Pentagon in these Pentagon documents reveal. Thanks. Yeah, um, this is a, a kind of a worrying audit of the whole process um, of uh, the supply chain of over a billion dollars worth of equipment, um, a lot of it weapons, as you said, uh, going into Kuwait and then snaking its way up into Iraq um, to various uh, U.S. Army depots. And it found, as previous audits have also found, um, that there was no real centralized uh, information source. So uh, the US military, at any one given point in time, uh, could not have an accurate assessment uh, of the quantities and the locations of equipment coming in. And I think this is especially concerning um, because we have seen in previous uh, DOD audits that the situation is even worse on the Iraqi side. Once equipment is handed over to the Iraqis, um, previous reports have shown that uh, the Iraqi warehouses are disorganized. Uh, there's even the Iraqi officials don't know uh, what's in some of the warehouses. There's uninventoried equipment sitting in shipping containers in the open. So I think all along this supply chain, there are problems and deficiencies. And why we are very concerned about this is that there is a very long history of leakage of weapons supplied to the Iraqi army. And uh, that, that leakage is going out to Islamic State and the many, many other armed groups, completely unaccountable armed groups, who are committing uh, atrocities and war crimes, not just in Iraq, but in Syria as well. And Patrick, can you talk about where you discovered uh, uh, much of this uh, Amer American military equipment, including assault rifles, uh, uh, among other things, um, including in, in uh, uh, stores uh, in Iraq and, and also for sale online? Yes, well, um, we have done a lot of systematic work. It's very difficult to actually track uh, individual weapons, but we have been looking at um, a lot of images and films of uh, Islamic State uh, deploying weapons and also uh, the Shia militias that are now grouped under the Popular Mobilization Units. Um, and we have looked at what type of weapons um, that they are deploying. And they're deploying weapons from all over the world, uh, including uh, fairly recently produced uh, U.S. weapons. It's important to note that the U.S. supplies not just its own weapons, but it ships um, Soviet pattern weapons from Eastern Europe, Kalashnikovs and the like, um, into the theater of war in Iraq. Uh, and so there's a very eclectic mix of weapons that's being used uh, by the Iraqi army that reappears in 
uh, the, the arsenals of armed groups, including Islamic State, um, and as our more recent research showed, uh, the various militias that are now, have now been incorporated into the Iraqi army, militias that have been themselves accused of extremely serious uh, human rights violations, um, executions and torture and the like. So I think that, um, you know, the, the, the problem is serious. It's recurring. Previous audits have uh, highlighted, highlighted similar problems. And while the, the, the Iraq um, is in great need of security assistance and has suffered terribly uh, over the, the years with the occupation of a third of the country by Islamic State, the wave of suicide bombings that we're seeing continuing to affect um, Shia neighbourhoods in Baghdad, uh, that assistance has to be provided with uh, care and caution and, and the appropriate monitoring. Otherwise, uh, the US and other coalition members will just be pouring fuel onto the fire. Well, you've suggested that previous audits have also highlighted similar problems. What, in this case, has the Pentagon said they're going to do uh, uh, to confront this situation and to master it? Well, I think um, it's very important to look historically at this. Uh, at the height of the insurgency after the uh, US occupation in 2003, um, the situation really got out of control at that point. Uh, the US was shipping, shipped over a million small arms to the Iraqi army to try and staunch the insurgency, and they lost track of 190,000 of those weapons. Many of the weapons weren't ordered, weren't registered at all. There was no system for really understanding what was going in to, to Iraq. Um, and that is, a, is the key recommendation from this current report, is the same as back in 2007. Um, there is a need for a centralised uh, system that incorporates all the information um, along a very complex supply chain dealing with vast quantities of weapons and equipment. And that centralised system has to coordinate all the various US um, armed forces and ar ar army bases um, in the region, not just in Iraq, but uh, in the supply centres in Kuwait. And without that, it's impossible, really, for the US um, or the Iraqi authorities to know what exactly is going in, um, where it is at any, at any given point, and um, if it is secure, um, ultimately, uh, or not being siphoned off uh, to these armed groups that has you know, um, wrought havoc and, and created such human suffering across the country for so many years. Patrick Wilkin, as we wrap up, it sounds like uh, weapons manufacturers and ISIS are the beneficiaries of this $1 billion um, worth of arms and other military equipment that uh, the U.S. and Iraq have lost track of. ISIS and weapons manufacturers. Um, what about reducing arms sales and the arms flow to the region? Well, I mean, I think the situation in Iraq is very difficult. There is a, an, a, an acute um, security problem. The Iraqi army did in collapse in 2014, and the whole country was vulnerable to armed groups. ISIS was camped on the outskirts of, of Baghdad. So there is obviously a key issue um, to address, uh, and part of that is security assistance. I think the real problem here is how that assistance is being managed and audited. Um, and without that, we will see that the lessons from history won't have been learnt, and this sort of assistance will only come back to haunt uh, future U.S. administrations. Patrick Wilkin, we want to thank you for being with us. Amnesty International's Arms Control and Human Rights Researcher, speaking to us from London. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, we go to Syria and then to a new report from The Intercept, uh, talking about Tiger Swan being employed by energy transfer partners, calling the water protectors the insurgency. Stay with us.